welcome or welcome back to my channel <laughs> it's been a while since i made like this kind of video where i'm just sitting down talking uh by myself you know it's been a while um maybe you can see like from your content recent content like i went crazy with games and streaming um, I've always loved playing games, especially like Nintendo ones. But for this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I learned to speak, read, and write, hopefully, I can, <laughs> Japanese. Um, I know I made like an animated, <laughs> animated, crappy like drawing video about this like last year. But um, since that was a pretty short one, uh, maybe it's not as detailed as it could have been when it comes to sharing the my experience in learning the language and this goes without saying that i learned japanese without studying literally i did not study anything about the language i did not um like sit down and then like properly go through the vocabulary or i didn't even own any like japanese learning books growing up and I never really practiced like the handwriting, but somehow I'm here in Japan working as an English or Tagalog to Japanese and vice versa translator. Like how did that happen? But yeah, that's basically like the gist of the video, like my journey or how I came to this point. I'm sorry if I'm a little like floppy um i just came back from the hospital because i just had my um annual physical examination or medical exam or here in japan we call it kenko shindan so yeah hopefully i can give you guys tips or maybe like books you can buy if you want to learn but yeah so let's get started okay so first things first um maybe you'd want to hear me speak japanese because i don't think i've like i don't think you've heard me or maybe have i don't think i spoke japanese in any of my videos but um let me just go ahead and introduce myself real quick just so that you'll have an idea チーズとトマトとえっとまあチキンとポテトが好きです。えっとやっぱ自己紹介普通は自己紹介はどうすればいいなわかんないですよね。あんまり自己紹介やってんややらないんですよ私。まあ普通の自己紹介は初めましてミ
it feels like it's really unprofessional. That's why I'm kind of embarrassed to say that. But they all like tell me, Eh, maji, tensai desu yo ne. Mecha tensai datto. But yeah, um, I just learned through anime. I don't even remember when I started watching anime. Like all, all my life, I remember I wa I'm, I've been watching anime. That's it. And I'm actually not the type to watch an English dub because I hate it. Probably because most of the English dubs anime that I watch are crappy and I really don't like how they butcher the names of the characters so I never really watch it in English. I just watch the Pokemon series in English and I watch some Studio Ghibli movies in English but I still watched those in Japanese as well. And when I was in fifth grade, um, the channel, the new channel that time, Animax, if you had cable, um, was about to air. So I was super excited because it was a, it was a channel dedicated just for anime shows. Who wouldn't be happy? And the good thing about Animax is they showed all their animes in Japanese and they had English subtitles. So I remember me watching like some of the first shows that they aired on Animax uh, when I was in fifth grade. I'm 28 now. So when I was in fifth grade, that was a long time ago. So I remembered um, the first animes that they showed or they even commercial like was Cyborg Kurucha. I really love that because like the opening song had gira gira ka, gira gira ka. Yeah. And they also had Ultra Maniac, which is one of my favorites. Chobits, GTO, Silent Mobius, DTA Tron. I think Wolf's Rain was also like one of the first animes they aired on Animax channel. So literally I just watched anime whenever I got home from school during the weekends. I wasn't really the outdoorsy type. I've always been like an indoor girl. I'm also the type of person who if I loved a specific anime series, I rewatch it. And one of my favorite anime series is Gakko no Kaidan or Ghost at School. It also aired in Animax and I don't know, it was pretty charming. Uh, it's not a popular anime. It was in early 2000s, 2000, 2001 I think. Maybe you haven't even seen it. Um, it's It was just like a really fascinating anime for me. And up to this day, I still rewatch it. Just yesterday, I was watching it. When people ask me or people when when I tell them, oh, I just learned because I just watched anime and then they would go like But I also watch anime Then how come I I still can't like learn Japanese as much as you have learned? I've learned Japanese because I like repeating things Not just anime, but even in movies like I think Mean Girls I've seen Mean Girls so much that I can actually recite the entire movie to you and whenever my boyfriend and I watch Mean Girls I like follow along the lines and he's gonna be like please stop it that's just the same with white chicks step brothers blades of glory you know like those kinds of funny movies like i memorize the entire line the entire movie and i can literally recite it to you right now if we have the time so that's basically how i was able to learn japanese i just kept on repeating a lot of the animes that i've watched already and because the scenes are repeating of course the the words that they're saying are just repeating all over and over again when i when i was in high school first year high school that's the time that I realized that I understood Japanese. So it took me about two years to learn the language, I think. Like without me studying, I didn't even try to memorize it. Like I was just literally watching the animes repeatedly. I had no intentions of learning the language during that time. For me, it was just so complicated that I don't think I could ever learn the language ever. Well, I was watching Get Backers. I specifically remember the anime that I was watching when the moment I realized that I understood Japanese. I was like preparing my, my dinner. I was like getting the rice, the, the, what's English of ulam? <laughs> yeah, I was preparing my dinner and then I, my back was turned and I had the television turned on. Wait, I'm sorry, I have a reminder. And then I was hearing this scene in Get Backers and then I was like, huh, I understood what he meant even without reading the subtitles. So. When I looked again, I decided to continue watching and then I like did this, but 
because I, I was far away from the TV. So I like, did that so I could cover up the subtitles and see if I could understand it. And then from time to time, I would like remove my hand and check to see if it matched with the subtitles. And it did. And that was the moment I was like, hmm, I can speak Japanese. That's the beginning of the journey. As I grew older, I like not only loved watching anime, but I also really loved the Japanese culture in general. So I started like watching some of their documentaries, some of their TV shows, their dramas, you know, like DVD magazines, etc. So not only did I learn a lot about um, like the language, but also the culture, like when to use specific words, when to use um, specific gestures, uh, when you watch anime with English subtitles, especially now, I think right now um, with the medium that we have, like the internet, you know, all those um, anime hosting websites like uh, Kiss Anime, the translators who translate like fan-made translations always include like translator's notes on top. I think they also this also applies in manga. Um, for example, I remember in Oran High School Host Club when I was watching the anime when I was younger, um, Haruhi was pretending to be a boy, right? Well, not really pretending, but they thought she was a boy, but she did she just didn't say anything. And then when she says that Oh, it's fun to be a guy. Maybe I should use ore. So like at that time when I was younger, I didn't understand like the concept of it. What did you mean by ore? There was a translator's note on top. Like ore is uh, like an expression mainly used by guys when they refer to themselves. Like instead of, you know, we say, yeah, um, I really love that food. Like I really love that. La 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 la. And then if you're a guy, you say, oh, ore ga koe ga ski. You know something like that but yeah um so basically that's how i learned japanese if you're planning on doing the same thing as i did i would recommend not just watching anime because a lot of the times watch their new tv programs documentaries um watch their interviews and stuff like that they talk nothing like anime unless they're trying to portray a character i i think watching anime is a really really good stepping stone to learning the language because you're watching something interesting and something you like while at the same time learning about the language and right now there are a lot of animes that tackle like real japanese culture if you haven't seen the slice of life anime lucky star i would recommend watching that uh, mainly because it portrays a character who's an otaku and she loves anime, she loves manga, she loves games. And she the setting of the anime is it's it's set in like modern Japanese times. So she's friends with people who are not into anime and those other characters portray what real not, not yeah, what real Japanese people are like because I think a lot of the notions of people from like Western or people who are not living in Japan and watch anime, they have this perception of people in Japan acting like anime characters or like they're similar to anime, but they're not. I mean, even if you go to Japan, not everybody here watches anime. And I think that's a really good anime, although it was relevant back in the day, 2006, 2007, which was when it aired. Um, but you will, I think it's a good anime to watch because you will like hear a lot of references. Um, they have a lot of puns in it. Um, Japanese culture references, not just anime references. And I think it's a good stepping stone into like learning the language. Plus their Japanese there is pretty basic. So I don't think you'll have a hard time. You just be sure to um choose the resources that you want to use and um again i recommend checking other means of like japanese program you'll see how they talk and like their gestures and all that not everything is really like what you see in anime and now moving on to how i learned to read and write um hiragana katakana and a few kanji here and there. I, men I mentioned earlier that as I grew older, I also really loved the the Japanese culture in general, and that actually included listening to Japanese music. 
there was a phase i had a phase where i was super addicted that i printed out the like my favorite anime song um lyrics i printed it out i put it in a notebook i make my own like lyric book and usually especially if you go to animelyrics.com you can choose like the kanji they have like the romaji and the kanji option so what i did was whenever i was listening to the music and i would read the lyrics along you know while listening i'd be like okay so you could read the romaji for example romance and hmm okay romance and then oh so when you look at the kanji like you'll see like the katakana the kanji hiragana and then ah oh, so this must be ro this must be man this must be mm, this must be su ro ma n su and basically that's just how i learned hiragana katakana and some of the kanjis so most of the things not most like all the things i know about japanese language are all memorized through time stock knowledge in songs you'll see the kanji for yume really really often these kanjis often come up in songs, so you'll see them in lyrics. And those kanjis I've memorized because of lyrics. And now that I've grown, hopefully I have, um, I know more kanji now compared to before. Um, people also ask me when I was interviewed for the job, was it in Japanese? Yes, my job interview was purely in Japanese because the person interviewing me was Japanese and does not speak any English but yeah basically that's how i learned japanese and or i hope this inspired you growing up i've had a lot of people tell me well not really my parents because they were pretty much supportive but like other people telling me that why do you keep watching anime i don't think you're gonna learn anything from that you know that's not really educational i heard that a lot while i was growing up but you know who learned japanese and was able to get a job here in japan all on their own this girl so yeah broaden your your resource um especially now you can find a lot of like online learning books and um websites for that were not readily available before and yeah uh just to give you like a few tips on what books to buy or i think books are helpful um if you're reviewing so i think uh, i actually really like this this is the kaizen master kaizen master nihongo n3 1800 words jlpt word book so um it has like these um uh kanji these um this is for n3 if you're interested in taking the n3 test i have these two so my friend kyla recommended this to me um so yeah and she passed m3 so yeah this is recommendable and this is the jlpt kaizen master m3 reading so i have the kanji and the reading because they also have listening vocabulary there's different kinds but this is um my weakness um i'm really good at listening because that's how we learn japanese a lot of the kanjis have different meanings different readings you know like just this kanji take this kanji for example this kanji this is the kanji for atarashi or new so sometimes depending on how it's written it's read as ata atara for atarashi or sometimes if it's standalone it's read as shin and another brand that i really liked because it's really easy to understand is the somatome um i have my somatome books here as well nihongo somatome i have m3 and this is um the vocabulary one so at least i have like m3 for vocabulary even though it's a different brand and then i have for m3 for kanji and for reading if you're not the type of person who um likes to study i would recommend reading a japanese manga preferably one that has furigana in it so at least the kanjis have hiragana translations for it so you can read it and then when you keep on reading it you'll remember that this kanji oh this kanji is for this meaning sometimes it's helpful even if you don't know how to read the kanji because again one kanji character can be read so many different ways but as long as you know the meaning you will get the sentence so for example this manga this is a shoujo manga i'm not gonna show you my other mangas because you know these are all bl 
So maybe some of you guys are not into that. But this is a shoujo manga. Plus, I think some of these BLs all don't have furigana. So you may not understand it. But buying a manga for kids is, for me, one of the best ways to learn as well. And this is Junisai, or 12 years old. I have, like, the current... 15 volumes. I, I'm still missing four, but yeah. So as you can see, for example, in this panel, there's a, a kanji right here, but you can see the furigana right here. So if you know how to read hiragana and katakana and you just want to practice your kanji, read a manga. It's really, really helpful. Plus, it's not boring and it also helps you enhance your hiragana and katakana reading skills. Um, so the, the mangas that I'm reading, like the, the BL ones, 90% of them don't have furigana, so challenge for me, especially for kanjis that are really, really hard, but yeah. All right, those are just, just some of my tips and recommendations on how you can improve or how you can learn to speak, read, and write in Japanese. It's not really helpful. I mean, I'm no pro. Um, I just wanted to share with you like what my journey is in terms of learning the language. If you guys have any questions, just leave the leave them in the comments below. So, yeah, but thank you so much for watching. I hope this wasn't too boring for you. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye.